Hello and welcome to a slightly unusual episode of Just in Time Worlds. Today I am going to talk about my book, The Hidden Blade. Now, if you're a follower of my podcast with Maxwell Alexander Drake, linked in the information card, you will know that I embarked on an edit of my first book after some difficulties with Amazon. I decided to go wide with my publishing and as such decided to release a second edition of the book rather than just releasing the edition on Amazon. Today I'd like to talk about why I did that. I'd like to show you the updated prologue and talk about what I was trying to world build in the writing of that prologue. So it's a bit of practical world building. So let's talk first about why I have a prologue. In my opinion, a prologue is supposed to be a meta thing. It's not supposed to introduce the characters that you're going to follow because that should be your chapter one. Your prologue should introduce something about the story that the reader wouldn't otherwise know. So in my case, I show the death of Duke Gaspard, last Duke of Attendulat, and that death kicks off the entire story of the saga of Sangwil Chronicles. So with that said, let's take a listen to what the audiobook of the prologue will sound like. Here we go. Prologue. It is given to every man to live not one life, but many, until his spirit comes to understand the great truth that lies behind the wheel. Wisdom of Viero. Gaspard soared at the reins of his horse. The young palfrey had taken fright and raced through the forest, leaving Gaspard's fiancée and the other hunters far behind. Bit between its teeth, the horse leaped over a fallen log. Steel-shod hooves hammered into the ground, disturbing a boar digging furrows in the soil. Grey fur curdled, bearing long tusks as the beast lifted its maw. Gaspard dug his heels into the horse's flank, but the treacherous footing gave way beneath them. A terrible scream tore from the palfrey as it collapsed to the forest floor. Gaspard jerked clear of the stirrups and tumbled from the saddle, landing hard but on his feet. His breath froze in his lungs. The boar's eyes shone crimson. The beast whirled and lunged at the struggling palfrey. Scrabbling for his sword, Gaspard backed away. His slender duelist blade would be of little use here, but some weapon served better than none. Yellow tusks gored at the horse's belly, and it thrashed sharp hooves against the berry bushes, shredding ripe fruit with its death throes. The red-eyed monster lifted its blood-flecked maw, scenting the air, and Gaspard braced himself. His marriage was only a week away. He would not die here. The huge boar stank to the heavens, hot breath steaming in the morning air. Mane flaring upright, the beast snorted, powerful hindquarters bunching, cloven hooves digging into the churned loam. Surely his huntmaster had heard the shriek of his dying horse. Gaspard only needed to survive until they found him. He put his back to a tree and brought his sword up into the guard position. The boar charged. A desperate dive almost cleared the beast, but a searing pain ripped across his hip, a glancing blow from the tusks shredding hunting leathers and flesh alike. The spray of splinters and crack of wood punctuated a brief halt to the boar's charge. The copper taste of blood ghosted in Gaspard's mouth as he drew on his Elamar. Power flooded his mind, manifesting as a shaft of light gathering in his hands as he brought Dusang magic to bear. He flared the incandescent spear at the boar, hoping to blind the beast and signal the hunt. The animal scraped its head against the ground, whining in protest. Did his eyes deceive him, or did the boar's crimson gaze clear? 
The salty scent of blood soaked into the clearing and dark shadows flitted through the summer leaves. The boar's muzzle rose, its eyes as red as the gueless tassel of Gaspard's sash. Flooding what remained of his Elamar into his legs, Gaspard fled. The Talton River forked no more than fifty paces ahead. If he could put water between himself and the boar, he would stretch the wick of his candle enough for the hunt to catch up. Lifting his arms as a meagre protection against the lashing branches and slashing ferns, he raced through the forest, gritting his teeth against the pain in his hip. His foot caught on a root, and he barely turned a clumsy fall into a controlled roll. The tassels of his ducal sash caught on a branch, jerking him back as he tried to rise. He ripped himself free, leaving the sash behind. What else would be lost today? Snorting its rage, the boar crashed through the undergrowth behind him. Thoughts of the future deserted Gaspard and he ran. He broke clear of the trees crowding the top of the small cliff that bordered the river fork and hurtled over the edge, legs and arms windmilling. Breath burst from him as he struck the water and plunged down into the green depths. Clamping his mouth closed against the burning needs of his lungs, he kicked for the surface. The water still held the chill of spring and ate hungrily at the strength in his muscles, even though summer had come to the land. He surfaced and looked back, gasping. The boar stood atop the cliff, snorting in the wind. Gaspard gave a shaky, relieved laugh and between gulping breaths struck out for the riverbank. He paused mid-stroke. Despite the freshness of the fast-flowing stream, the tang of blood filled the air. Trying to identify the source of the smell, he struggled against the current, paddling strokes turning him in a slow circle. An elemental roar jerked his gaze upstream. A wall of water bore down on him, grey-green and crowned with blood-red foam, like the boar's crimson gaze. Gaspard scrambled for the bank. Kicking and yelling, he thrust his feet at the muddy bottom, seeking purchase. He stretched for the shore, fingertips touching reeds and scattering dragonflies. The wave broke over him, pounding him down, tumbling him into the stones of the riverbed. His vision waned as breath escaped his lungs. The sweet tang of blood still flooded his senses, even as his body surrendered the battle for life. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's talk about what I was trying to accomplish in the prologue. Besides showing the death of Gaspard, I also wanted to emphasize what the current time period was. It is summer when the death takes place, which is why there are fruits on the berries that the horse kicks and why I explicitly reference summer has come to the land even though the water still held the chill of spring. I also wanted to world build the sashes that the nobles wear. So Gaspard's sash gets caught and it pulls him backwards, showing that nobles wear their sashes, that those sashes are important attributes of their rank, and also referring to the gueless tassel as a red tassel. So the Red tassel, the gueless tassel, indicates that he has passed the trial of Dusang, but I specifically wanted to link gueless and red in the reader's mind and show them that I use the heraldic names of colors as part of my sashes so that they're not surprised when they see words like purpure and so on associated with the colors of the sashes. The other thing I wanted to introduce briefly at least was the magic. So I showed Gaspar drawing in his Elamar and flashing light at the boar, which is his family's Dusang magic.
And then lastly, I did make a very small reference to him stretching his wick. And the reason why I did that is to introduce the reader to the concept of keeping time by means of a candle, which is how the people in the empire of Lumiaron keep track of time. They don't have clocks the way we do. They don't talk about hours. They have candles that have rings on them, that one ring is equivalent to about two hours. And as the rings burn down, they keep track of time in that way. Now, why this is important is because I use that to keep the reader immersed in the world by having all kinds of sayings that come from that candle clock, like stretching your wick, the wax melting on the candle, and so on. So that was world building. Story building wise, the death of Gaspard, as I say, kicks off the whole saga, and that's what I wanted to show. So what did you think of the prologue? Did it work for you? Let me know in the comments if you caught the world building references and what you thought of them and what you thought of the death of Gaspard. And most importantly, would you turn the page? If you're interested in picking up the whole story, check out the second edition of my book available at digital stores everywhere. And there is an audiobook links down below. Hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this, and maybe check out my video on keeping time in a fantasy world. And if you want to connect around this or any other topics, don't forget I do have a Discord server. Link down below. And I will see you soon for another episode of Just in Time Worlds.